What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video and today we have got Peps 3331. That is right, this guy uses any formation. If you do enjoy the tactic videos on this channel, smash the like button, subscribe and turn on notifications. But let's get into the testing phase and see how good this tactic is. So we're going to kick the testing phase off then with Manchester City. And this team obviously are incredible, but what I will say is we made them even more incredible because we won five trophies in one season. That being the Champions League, the English Premier Division, the FA Cup, the Car Carabao Cup and the Community Shield. We scored 147 goals and only conceded 38, which with this attacking system is really, really good in my opinion. Now, what I do want to say is obviously the actual Premier League itself was completely dominated by ourselves. 101 points compared to Liverpool with 85. So a very, very good season there. And this, this tactic's a ton of fun to play with, guys. It really is. It's very attacking. It's very unique. This guy plays... A, what system does this guy not want to play? Any system, he's going to give it a go, I swear to God. Um, Obviously, a very, very weird-looking system, I will say. Um, Going over to some... Let's do some of the team stats first. So as you can see, most points per game, most goals at 147, most shots for at 974, fewer shots against at 349, most possession at 61%. So a lot of the key stats going in our favour. And also the pass completion, not half bad either, with 87%. So it just shows that this tactic does do a little bit of everything. You've got the possession, you've got the shots, you've got everything going in your favour. It really is a great tactic and one which I am honestly very fond of. Going over to the date hub, we are going to go and have a little look. We're looking at 3.87 goals per game, conceded at bang on one, which is definitely not bad considering how attacking this system actually appears to be. And the pass completion, obviously, at 87.89%, so practically 88. So a very good season in terms of the data hub and one which I am absolutely thrilled with. Going over to the actual squad, we are going to go and have a little look. We're going to have Erling Haaland coming in. I mean, the guy is an absolute machine. 123 goals across all competitions for Erling Haaland. We've got Jack Greenish with 29, Phil Foden with 27, Bernardo Silva with 21, 11 for big man Kevin, and 10 for Julian Alvarez. In terms of the assisters, it's going to be very interesting because we do have 38 from Jackie Grealish. 34 for Bernardo Silva. Sergi, Sergio Gomez obviously gets quite a good role in this sort of um, system with 25 assists, 24 for Phil Foden, 22 for KDB. Julian Alvarez coming in with a very impressive 17 and Erling Haaland as well, impressing me quite a lot with 12. So do you know what? A fantastic season with the stats. It was bound to be with this team at the end of the day, but still very impressive the overall results and what a start to this testing. And then got over to Spain with Barcelona. And do you know what? We still had fantastic results over here. We won the Spanish First Division. We won the Spanish Cup and the Spanish Super Cup against Valencia. Absolutely dominating the Spanish division. Scoring 145 goals. Conceding 39, ranking us the third best, which is still really, really good considering, obviously, this is definitely a more attacking formation. Zero red cards, which we do love to see as well. Runners up in the Champions League. So that's also something to take home. It is still a great performance. And in terms of the team stats, we are going to have a very quick look. Dominated by Real Madrid and Barcelona, as always. Most points per game at 2.74. Most goals at 145. Most shots are at 902. And most possession coming in with 63%. So although this is a free at the back system, you are still going to easily maintain the ball. And I'm going to explain how you do that when we break down the tactic. But do you know what? Another fantastic season. Pass completion also looking very good at 89%. So a real, real good dominant possession tactic as well. And one that just absolutely blows my mind. Going over to the data hub, we are going to have a look. We're looking at 3.82 goals per game. Basically, one goal conceded in the game as well. And obviously, the pass completion we just discussed. So, a fantastic season. A lot of goals going in. And I do want to say this right now. This tactic is designed for more elite teams. Obviously, it is a Pep Guardiola tactic. We tested with Pep Guardiola teams. It is made for teams of a certain calibre. You're not going to see Leeds United roll with this in the Premier League. So, that's just an example. But um, this is designed for, obviously, more elite teams. Because you're not going to play this with a low standard team, obviously. But it is a ton of fun to play with if you've got a team like this or if you've built up a team like this over time. And trust me, you're going to love it. I mean, they got over to one of his former teams, Bayern Munich, and we enjoyed a fantastic season. Winning the Champions League, which I will show you in a second. We won the Bundesliga and also the German Super Cup against RB Leipzig. We scored 143 goals. That stat line has been very consistent. It's roughly around the same figure. 30 goals conceded, actually the best over in Germany, and one red card across the season. The actual division was an absolute joke. I mean, we dominated at 30 points advantage. Dortmund having an awful season. So 
he can't really complain at all. And it's just a really impressive season. I mean, there's literally hardly any flaws. In terms of the team stats, we're looking at most points per game. We're looking at most goals at 143. Most shots for at 740. Fewer shots against at 299. Most possession again at 63%. Partner in a pass completion of 89. And also the fewest conceded at 30. So do you know what? An incredible stat line all over. We've got a bit of everything. Great defensively. Good amount of possession. Very good pass completion. Getting the shots on goal. It's not much to hate, really. It is really going all in our favour. And in terms of the actual squad players, we'll see what some of the stats are saying. We are going to be looking at the likes of Sadio Mane with 47, Leroy Sane with 32, 19 for Muller, Musiala with 17. We'll fill with this was a bit better. 12 coming in for Trooper Monting. Delic coming in with 7. Very impressive. Hernandez with 6 as well. In terms of the assists, we've got 28 for Sadio Mane, 22 for Leroy Sane, 20 for Thomas Muller, Musiala with 20, 19 for Joshua Kimmich. Incredible from him. And nine for Kingsley Coman. So a lot of different things. What I will say is it seems like a lot more players are getting involved in terms of the goals compared to obviously when Haaland completely dominated the show. And um, we are going to show you the Barcelona stats as well. Don't you worry, but we're going to do that in the tactics so we can actually sort of give you an example of how the roles work. But overall, a fantastic season. And that is three amazing tests. I'll show you this game because I actually played it manually. We lost the first leg 3-4 and we come back and beat this incredible Napoli team 4-0 at our home. And as you can see right now, it's going to be Thomas Muller finding himself out wide into Musiala, an elegant ball over the top into Sadio Mane, who had an incredible season, by the way, under this system. Um, Obviously a lot better than what he's doing in real life at the moment. We go again there with Musiala down the left-hand side, as always, into Thomas Muller, takes his time, an elegant ball over the top into Sane. It's a poor defensive display from Mario Rui there, who obviously puts it practically on a plate for Sadio Mane, who's never going to miss. He finishes it up with a little penalty. Keeper actually saves it, but defense is sleeping. No one's there to try and put a challenge in, and he gets an easy rebound. And the last goal of the game is going to be coming from Kingsley Coman, linking up into Leroy Sane, who's going to cut back, square it back into Coman, into Muller, pass and play. Mere, I don't know what you're doing, son. You parried it in your own net. But overall, what a comeback. Right, and I'll show another game because this is a bit of drama. It's the Carabao Cup final against Manchester United in a game which we did win 7-2. As we get off to a very positive start there, dodgy De Gea strikes again. A very awful parry. Defence could be a bit more switched on as Haaland gets the goals the goals sort of started. As it is going to be Gomez into Alvarez who drives up the back line right across into Erling Haaland. And one player I want to talk about a lot is Sergio Gomez. He thrives in this system. And honestly, I hope we see a lot more of him in real life as well. I'm actually a really big fan. As a Another set piece gets whipped in from him here into Erling Haaland. No one's near him at all. No one is near him. And it's a great header to obviously take the lead 3-0. It's going to be Gomez here who loses up to Dallow on this occasion. Into Sabitzer who just drives at the back line. Into Bruno. Into Eriksen. And you know what? That's quite a good goal. I'm going to be going to be very open. Very open and honest. This is a great play from Manchester United. And that was a way back for him. But unfortunately, you can't then go and concede to us from another set piece. Kind of a little bit of a rebound as it is going to be Gomez getting another sort of assist coming in from that set piece. We build up again from Foden in the midfield into Bernardo Silva. Just run at the back line. They're so nervous. Options in the middle. He finds him into Alvarez. No option. He could have went to Haaland. Could have went to Alvarez. He chose Alvarez and he tucks the ball away nicely. Ruben Diaz into John Stones, playing this about with such ease and prowess. Bernardo Silva over the top into Erling Haaland. It's actually, I think that might have come off Basaka in the chip. And it's going to be another goal coming in. We've got to take it and run with it because why not? It's an absolute stampede. And as they do get a little set piece there, I mean, Maguire actually does something good for United, which is very rare to see. We build up again here, Laporte into Gundogan, back into Laporte. We're seeing the pass and play now. A beautiful run from Foden. Is he going to square it? He is, and it's into Haaland. De Gea almost jumps over the ball and Haaland tucks it in in what was a dominant 7-2 win. I just want to quickly say before we do break down the tactic, please do leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy my content. And if you never want to miss a video again, hit the little notification bell because this way you're never going to miss my content and there's going to be a lot more coming this week. So do get involved and I hope to see you boys around. So this is going to be the PEP 3331. Now, as always, if you're a Patreon member, you can download all three of these files as well as get early access. I want to thank everyone floating down the screen right now that are either current or new Patreon members. You can sign up for just £2 a month and get access to a load of cool stuff. So thank you to everyone that does do that. The link can be found in the description. But don't worry, you can get all of these for free by simply copying as we do break them down. So let's go over it then. So it is going to be a positive mentality based around the Tiki Taka style, by the way. In possession, you want fairly wide. Play out of defense. It is a Pep Guardiola tactic at the end of the day. Much shorter, slightly higher tempo. Work ball into the box alongside of low crosses 
in transition, you want counter press, counter, distribute quickly, and distribute to the center backs. And obviously, we're not going to distribute to the full backs because we don't actually have any. Um, so there's no point in having that on. And also take short goal kicks. Out of possession, you want a standard defensive line and a high press line of engagement alongside of more often and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Now, if you're wondering why, we're not going for a high line in the sort of standard version. It's because if you, I'm going to put on the screen right now the actual data hub stats we got from Bayern Munich. And we defended really well, as you can see, conceding only 0.88 goals across the entire league, which is really impressive. If it was a higher line, I feel like it would definitely easily be over one. So a standard line, got enough goals, defended well as well. So you want to have that on there. In terms of the goals per game, we scored 4.21 with this Bayern Munich side on average, which is absolutely incredible. And also the pass completion coming in with 89%. So I wouldn't really mess about with this too much. Obviously, in the attack and variant, it probably will change. But just going into games, I would definitely re recommend sick with this going over to the actual player roles then we're gonna have a sweeper keeper on support default instruction they're gonna have a wide center back on the right on defend on default instruction and exactly the same for the left hand side of one now if you're wondering why we've not got obviously like tackle harder on or anything like that that's because i don't want the players to be too aggressive because we've only got three at the back anyway we haven't even got full backs so I don't want them to be too aggressive and, you know, make rush challenges because, quite frankly, we haven't got a lot of people back, so we can't really be doing that. However, we do opt to have a central defender on the stopper role. Just that one that's a little bit higher up than the other two because we do want someone trying to, you know, win the ball back quickly when the ball gets played over the top and sweep out and try and win it back as quick as we can because once we do have the ball, we are absolutely unbreakable. So that is the main focus. We then have a DM obviously on defend, on tackle harder, because this one, I do want to be aggressive. I want him to be winning the ball back as much as he can. If it means putting in a challenge, put in a challenge, simple as that. Um, So I would definitely recommend having the tackle harder on for him. We then have wingers. Now this role, this role had my mind doing circles because ideally, you know, I wanted to have wide midfielders, but they wouldn't really work. Um, Defensive wingers weren't really what I sort of saw from that Man City team. So I've opted to have wingers in and it worked really well. Nice and simple, both on support, on pass at shorter and tackle harder. And on the right-hand side, exactly the same. And I'm going to say this right now. There are going to be a lot of pass at shorter ons because with this system, you want to maintain the ball. You can't afford to be losing the ball too often because obviously you haven't got a load of people at the back. Um, So having it on pass shorter just helps maintain the ball, better possession. And it's just the way that City play. And it really is a very successful way of playing. Going over to the left-hand side, we actually opted for an inside forward on attack on pass at shorter and sit narrower. And to actually complement that, I'm going to display Ansu Fati's stats. 44 goals across the season, 34 assists, and a 7.92 match rating. So an incredible season from Ansu Fati over in Spain. And trust me, just this front line is an absolute joke. Going over to the shadow striker is going to be on attack again on pass at shorter and roam from position. And again, here we have Pedri coming in with 27 goals, 20 assists, and a 7.55 match rate. And so a very good stat line there. Ideally, I honestly thought he might have got more assists, obviously like a Kevin De Bruyne did, et cetera, et cetera. But still a great season from Pedri. And on the right-hand side, we've got the inverted winger on attack on pass at shorter and sit narrower. On this position, we had Usman Dembele. Luckily, not too injury-prone in this save. With 30 goals, 33 assists, coming in with a 7.82 average match rating. And to finish it off, it is going to be the advanced forward, obviously on attack on default instructions. And that is going to be Lewandowski with 91 goals, 14 assists, with an 8.17 match rating. This guy was sheerly unstoppable. Not as good as Haaland, but still put up a really good stat line. And trust me, whatever striker you've got is going to get goals in the system because it is so attacking. Now, that is going to be the default version broken down. We're now going to go over two variants, which we always do, an attacking variant and a defensive variant. I want to quickly say, if you are enjoying the breakdown so far, smash the like button. Let's try and get 63 likes. Random number. Let's try and smash 63. Anyway, the attack and variant. Bang. Here we go. So as you, as you can see, there's not going to be a load of changes because it is already so attacking. But we have Obdus. Everything's the same in terms of positions. We have opted to have a deep line playmaker, just someone a little bit more attacking on the support role on tackle harder. In possession, we still kept the positive mentality, by the way, because anything else is going to be practically more harm than good. We've obviously got the fairly wide player of defense, much shorter. We've whacked the tempo all the way up to be more aggressive. The work the ball into the box remains the same. In transition, it's exactly going to be the same. We have distribute quickly on anyway, so you, there's no real point in obviously taking it off, and there's not much more we can really do on this screen. But an out of the possession, we have got 
the higher defensive line. And that is because this tactic is definitely one you're going to be switching to if you're desperate for a goal. If you're chasing the game, you just need a goal at any point. And the high defensive line is great for this because obviously you, you sort of forced them back into their half. Now, you are going to concede the odd goal by being vulnerable at the back with this. This is why I like to say, use this if you are desperate for a goal. I wouldn't go into games like this. Obviously, if you're like, say, going into a game, a couple goals down on aggregate, and you feel like you need to get a goal ASAP, then do use it. But I wouldn't recommend going into every single one of your games with the attack and variant. And the defensive variant is going to be like this. So as you can see, we actually have opted for a slightly different 3-3-3-1. As you can see, we've maintained the same roles here on the inverted um, winger, the inside forward, the advanced sword. We've got an advanced playmaker on pass at shorter and roam from position on support. We've opted for the same instructions on the DM. And we've actually introduced two wing backs, both on automatic, on take fewer risks and dribble less, and exactly the same on the other side. We've kept the positive mentality. In possession, as you can see, we've just slowly, you know, the tempo's gone back to the sort of default. I didn't want to lower it anymore because I feel like it wouldn't be the same system, if that makes sense. And in transition, we've taken off the distribute quickly because obviously, if you are holding on to a lead, what's the rush? Waste some time. And out of possession, we've dropped back the line a little bit to standard and kept the trigger press because we don't want to, you know, completely change the way the tactic plays. We just want it to be a little bit more defensively solid. And that is going to be three versions of the pep 3331 tactic broken down i hope you guys have enjoyed today's video if you have please do, sh do show some love leave a like subscribe to the channel leave a little comment on what teams you want to be tested with next and managers you want to see and i'll see you boys for the next video